MZ 250 cubic centimeters motorcycles are equipped with the EM 251 engine manufactured in several versions. In the following video film, we'll demonstrate the overhaul of such an engine by means of MZ special tools. Engine dismantling. The engine has been removed from the rolling chassis for overhaul. The gearbox oil is already drained. Unscrew the front clamping bolt first. and remove the fitting sleeve situated below by means of a suitable punch. After fixing the engine into the assembly device, unscrew the head fastenings and remove the cylinder head. Pull the cylinder. Shift the piston support below the piston skirt. After the circlips have been removed from the piston, press out the gudgeon pin by means of the pin remover. Gudgeon pin, piston and needle bearing have to be removed. Dismount the gear shift lever. Unscrew the tachometer drive cap. Take out the adjusting plate and rubber O-ring. Unscrew the tachometer drive worm. Pull the connection hoses from the oil pump. Dismount the oil pump. The kickstarter assembly remains in the dismounted clutch cover. Remove the gasket. Fit the protection sleeve on the crankshaft pin and screw the clutch puller fully into the clutch thread. Pull off the clutch. Remove the primary transmission pinion with clutch center, needle bearing and spacer. Flatten the tap washer on the helical gear nut.
install the assembly bridge to block the helical gear. Unscrew the helical gear fastening nut. Pull the helical gear from the main shaft. Dismount the gear retaining lever. Unscrew the terminal plate and the socket head screw on the signal unit and remove the signal unit assembly. Unscrew the brush holder. Unscrew the three stator housing fastening screws and pull off the stator housing. Use the pulling spindle to withdraw the rotor from the crankshaft. Flatten the sprocket nut tap washer. Block the sprocket at the gear housing by means of the retainer. Pull off the sprocket. Unscrew the neutral gear indicator contact. Dismount the lay shaft sealing cap. Remove the shim. Four three rubber sealing plugs. Unscrew all fourteen crankcase tightening screws. Unscrew the neutral gear stop plug and remove with spring and ball. Reclamp the crankcase fastenings. Fasten the assembly bridge with installed clutch puller and spindle by means of two screws to the right side shell. Simultaneously screw both spindles home to split the crankcase. Make sure not to tilt the shell. Draw back the selector arm and pull out the gear shift shaft. Remove the selector fork rod washer.
Lift out the lay shaft circlip and remove ceiling cap and ceiling disc. Use a soft metal punch to tap out both transmission shaft and selector fork cam. Lift out the complete transmission assembly. Fit the protection sleeve on the crankshaft pin and install the clutch puller. Fasten the assembly bridge to the left side shelf. Force out the crankshaft from its bearing seat. Support the crankshaft with one hand. Lift out all circlips from the left side shell. Remove the oil guide disc. Use a punch to tap out the oil seal. Lift out the circlip from the right side shell and remove the oil seal. Dismount the circlip and oil guide disc. Use suitable punches to tap out the ball bearings from the heated up right side shell. Complete the pulling spindle and insert into the bearing. Install the assembly bridge and tighten the puller spindle into the spreading sleeve. Turn the nut and Pull out the bearing 6203. Remove the bearing from the meanwhile heated up left side shell. Use the ball bearing puller to slide remaining ball bearings from the crankshaft.
dismantling of transmission assembly. The transmission assembly consists of selector cam, selector fork rod with washers and selector forks, main shaft and lay shaft. The first gear pinion on the lay shaft runs on 24 bearing needles. Remove the sliding pinion for first and third gears. Between the third and second gear pinion, a spacer is installed. The fifth gear pinion on the main shaft runs on 24 bearing needles as well. Remove the fourth and fifth gear sliding pinion. Dismount the fourth gear pinion. Finally, examine all transmission components for signs of wear. Check the selector forks for absolute rectangularity to the selector fork rod. Examine all selector forks for signs of bluing or wear. The three degree angles machined on both sides of the dogs should not be rounded off. Make sure the lay shaft lubrication bore for the third gear pinion and the second gear pinion is absolutely free. To start with the assembly, first complete the main shaft. Fourth gear pinion, shim, circlip, fourth and fifth gear sliding pinion, spacer, 24 bearing needles, fifth gear pinion, Spacer, circlip. Afterwards, pre-assemble the lay shaft with installed second gear sliding pinion. Second gear sliding pinion, spacer. Third gear pinion. Splined thrust washer, circlip, first and second gear sliding pinion, spacer, 24 bearing needles, first gear pinion, spacer, circlip. Use the transmission assembly device to locate all components. Insert the main shaft and the lay shaft. Install the selector forks 010.
zero double one and zero one two into the sliding pinion grooves. Insert the selector fork rod. Fit the selector cam. For checking, both transmission shafts can be rotated in any direction with the neutral gear stop groove pointing upward. Clutch dismantling. The distance between pressure plate and clutch drum indicates the clutch service limit. Whenever the gap falls short of 0.5 millimeters or the clutch develops functional trouble, the clutch has to be dismantled. When using the assembly device, always install the primary transmission pinion with clutch center. Fit the clutch, make sure the pressure plate mates with the support bolts of the device. Screw the handle nut to the clutch pressure bearing, but do not apply any pressure. Flatten the tab washers and unscrew all six nuts. Release the handle nut. Remove the pressure flange. Take out the springs and spacers. Flatten all six tab washers and remove the screws. Dismantle the clutch into its component parts. Examine the bonded plates for wear. The service limit is 2.7 millimeters. Check plain plates for signs of bluing and replace distorted plates. Put the pressure plate on the support of the assembly device to start clutch mounting. Fit the clutch drum. Fit a bonded plate and install alternately five bonded and four plain plates. Mount the clutch body. Fit the tab washers, tighten the six screws and secure.
install six spacers and springs. Mount the pressure flange and tension by means of the handle nut until tab washers and nuts can be fitted. Tighten the nuts crosswise and secure. Clutch cover dismantling. Tighten the clutch cover on the Kickstarter shaft in a vise with soft metal pads. Turn the clutch release sleeve to remove the clutch release lever and lift off the release sleeve. Rotate the clutch cover. Slacken the retaining bolt nut a few turns and use a punch to loosen the retaining bolt. Unscrew the fastening nut and tap out the bolt. Remove the Kickstarter crank. Release the Kickstarter spring. Lift off the clutch cover. Remove the Kickstarter shaft. Level out the circlip. Pull off the kickstarter pinion and the ratchet with cam plate. Observe the correct ratchet position on the Kickstarter shaft during assembly. Replace the spring, ratchet, thrust washer, cam plate and Kickstarter pinion. Insert 24 bearing needles. Push on the thrust washer and fit the circlip. Reclamp the Kickstarter shaft. Install the Kickstarter spring.
Make sure the spring engages the clutch cover bore during mounting. Swivel the clutch cover approximately one and a quarter turns counterclockwise and install the Kickstarter crank. Insert the retaining bolt and tighten the assembly. Turn the clutch release sleeve into the clutch release lever. The machined markings on the clutch release sleeve have to be below the clutch cover center line. Engine assembly. Prior to assembling the engine, make sure that all parts intended for reuse are absolutely clean and have been carefully examined for signs of damage. Tab washers, gaskets and dismantled oil seals have to be replaced with new parts. A replacement crankcase has to be completed first. Insert sealing discs with sealing compound. Drive in the alternator retaining dowel pin. Install the plane pin for gear shift stop up to 57 millimeters. Fit the oil guide sheet. Tighten and secure. Drive in the dowel pin. Insert the fitting sleeve and plain pin. Install the crankshaft bearing circlip with the open ends facing the oil bore. Fit the circlip on the lay shaft with its open ends pointing upward. Heat up the crankcase shell to approximately 100 degrees centigrade. At the same time, heat up the heating peg for the crankshaft bearing inner race. Clamp the crankcase shell into the assembly device. Insert the transmission bearing 6204 and secure. From the transmission side, mount the lay shaft cap, sealing disc and bearing 6203. Insert the oil guide disc with its punched mark into the open end of the circlip. Use a punch to fit the crankshaft main bearing. 
Make sure the closed side faces the crank chamber. Heat up the bearings inner race to approximately 100 degrees centigrade. Slip the crankshaft to the stop with its long pin ahead into the heated up bearing. Insert the separating rubber plug and selector rod bottom washer into the shell. Install the pre-mounted transmission assembly to its stop. Place the top washer on the selector rod. Insert the gear shift rod. Slip the transmission bearing with heated up inner race on the main shaft. Apply sealing compound on the mating surface. Push the crankshaft main bearing with heated up inner race on the crankshaft pin. Mate the right side crankcase shell, previously heated up to approximately 100 degrees centigrade. Use a punch to drive in the fitting sleeve. Install the lower shell screws with seals and the remaining screws without seals. Starting from the center, tighten all crankcase screws properly. Insert the lay shaft bearing with heated up inner race to its top. Install the oil guide disc and circlip in a way to ensure that punch mark and open ends are facing the oil bore. Always use a new sealing ring for the neutral gear arresting screw. Tighten the oil drain plug with a torque of 50 newton meter. To achieve the required 0.3 mm free play between bearing outer race and sealing cap collar, both of them have to be measured. Fit shims to gain the required free play. Consider the thickness of the gasket.
insert sealing cap screws and neutral indicator contact with sealing compound. Fit the sprocket on the lay shaft. Block by means of the sprocket retainer and tighten with a 60 newton meter torque. Secure the sprocket. Insert the fitting sleeve and tap in the new crankshaft oil seal with sealing lips facing the bearing by means of the assembly punch. Mount the circlip. Install the three rubber sealing plugs. Fit the alternator rotor. Mount the stator housing and tighten Install the signal unit with spacer. Tighten the back plate. Tighten the signal unit and rotor with a 20 newton meter torque. Use the assembly tool to install a new oil seal with its sealing lip facing out and secure. Mount the gear shift retaining lever. Insert the spring. Push on the helical gear. Lock the helical gear by means of the assembly bridge and tighten with a 60 newton meter torque.
secure the fastening nut. Insert the spacer with its recess facing down. The needle bearing and primary transmission pinion with clutch center. The required pinion actual free play is 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 millimeter. Determine the correct actual free play of the pinion by lifting up the pinion and a measuring device. Use spacers of different thickness to achieve the required free play. Mount the thrust washer with the recess facing down and fit the spring lock washer. Slide the clutch on the absolutely grease-free crankshaft pin. Use a spacer to tighten the clutch assembly with a 90 Newton meter torque. Fit the gasket. Observe the correct position of the cam plate prior to mounting the pre-assembled clutch cover to the crank case. Tighten the tachometer drive worm. Insert the clutch adjusting plate and the rubber O-ring. Observe the required 11 millimeter distance between connection spindle bore and the clutch cover. The clutch course adjustment is made by means of the adjusting plate. Install the tachometer drive housing. Put the sealing compound applied oil pump gasket into place. Make sure that the oil pump dog and main shaft slot mate properly. Install the gear shift lever. Fit the oil pump connection hose to the non-return valve and secure.
prior to mounting the piston cylinder assembly, both parts have to be examined to make sure of the correct standard 0.05 millimeter clearance. The arrow on the piston crown faces to the outlet port and the punched figures indicate the piston diameter in millimeters. In the demonstrated case, a cylinder of the plus one tolerance group has to be mounted. The marking plus one corresponds with a liner diameter of 69.01 millimeter. Tolerance group marking is indicated by punched figures on the cylinder top. Whenever new parts are installed, make sure all components such as piston, gudgeon pin, connecting rod and small end bearing correspond with the color code shown in our mating table. Heat up the piston to approximately 50 degrees centigrade. Guide the cold gudgeon pin by means of the guiding pin into the piston and connecting rod with fitted needle bearing. Install both circlips into the piston grooves and check for correct fitting. Insert the cylinder base gasket and place the piston support below the piston skirt. Apply some oil on the cylinder liner. Turn the piston rings with open ends against the locating pegs. Squeeze the top ring and ease the cylinder down. Remove the piston support. Fit a cylinder head gasket. Install the cylinder head. Fasten the head diagonally with two nuts. Gap determination is demonstrated by means of a sectional model in this case. The gap is determined by means of a 2 mm thick tin wire fitted between cylinder head interior and piston crown. Guide the wire to the cylinder liner. Turn the piston through the top dead center to flatten the wire for value determination. The correct value should be 0 0.9 to 1.2 millimeters. The achieved value is an approximate one, which can be corrected by fitting the appropriate gaskets between cylinder and cylinder head. Tighten the cylinder head diagonally with a 34 newton meter torque.
Timing is possible with a dismounted engine. The following tools are required for timing. Timing tool, electronic voltmeter, control unit, and a 12 volt battery. Two point zero five plus zero point five millimeters is the correct setting. If necessary, reset the timing by shifting the back plate on the stator housing. Finally, top up the gearbox with 900 cubic centimeters of gear oil of the recommended grade. The complete overhaul technology is contained in our workshop manual issued in several languages for the MZ ETZ251 motorcycle.